Welcome to Friday night's video and our second master series. I do believe this is the 66th video in our second master series, the 15th video in our basic processors, and the second video in dealing with reverb and convolution. So basically in this video, I wanted to touch upon a couple things. This is a really simple concept that a lot of people just ignore, and it makes it impossible for you to realize the potential of your next biggest gun being your convolution reverb and being able to use it to control the environment and to sound sculpt with it which we'll talk in the next talk about in the next couple of videos i mean we've talked about you know the the actual you know reverb itself you know you have initial sound it starts bouncing around the room and bringing stuff back early re late reflections and things like that it's not a difficult concept we're not getting into real heavy duty acoustics and things like that we just the basic concept is what we need to focus on to do what we need to do at this point in this next master series you know, we've got things like RT60, die-off time. That's going to have importance because that's the length of, say, like an impulse response or something like that. You know, it has a direct relation to that. So understanding this concept is pretty integral. You know, we have... The problem is that when we have a direct sound, that hopefully that we have... A sound that we've sculpted that whether we have a guitarist or a vocalist or whatever we're working with that either that individual has focused his abilities to be a good vocalist and sing well and or a guitarist has shaped his sound or a keyboardist has shaped his sound you know all these things have taken into consideration that we come back to for this to have the best impact is Focusing on that initial sound sculpting and then focus on getting as good a clean a capture as possible Unless you're trying to get a capture of an individual or some type of instrument in a nice room a nice room You know, I'm not talking about your garage that you spent five hundred dollars with acoustic treatment on I'm talking about a nice room, you know that an acoustician came into that's knowledgeable in acoustics the science of sound and sculpted your studio and charged you, you know, more money than you're probably going to spend on your wife in her lifetime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's where you want to get a capture. So with all due respect to individuals that think they spent $500 on their room and that, that there's a, a big studio, you're not. So, you know, <laughs> isolate and get a good as clean a capture as possible and then learn how to use your second biggest gun, your convolution reverb as well as possible to put things where you want them and also use it as a sound sculpting tool to enhance them, which we'll talk about, like I said, in the next couple of coming videos. But the concept here is you getting that cleanest capture as possible to reduce mess because it doesn't just bring back what's good you know, if you listen to my voice right here, it might not sound too bad. If I go in the bathroom, it's going to sound different. Not only the impulse response is different, but the frequency response is different. If I start talking to you in a tin can, I've got a way different impulse response and a way different frequency response. They are both affecting the sound in dramatic ways. Sometimes you may not realize it in your room that it is affecting it. So isolate, get as clean a capture as possible, and be real careful of those things. And remember, you know, the concept here of it bouncing around and then bringing back all this stuff. And it's, it's early reflections a lot of time would be great. If you go back and watch those videos before the first master series, you'll learn about impulse responses, the C50 clarides, cutting them down, equalizing them so they've got a flat frequency response and things like that to help you utilize them better. And, you know, because when we get in here, we've got, first of all, we have to focus on getting as clean a capture as possible. Then the next thing we need to focus on is cleaning up the capture we have as well as possible. Doing the things like we talked about in the last segment on equalization, filtering things out, high and low pass filtering, that kind of stuff. Putting things in all things like RX to clean up as much reverberation stuff that's happening and mess, you know, saturation, distortion, noise, all that stuff because any of that stuff that gets on there, the convolution reverb, it multiplies all that stuff. 
because it's not just like you think it's just put it in this space. It's not the mathematics. I'm not going to get really heavy into convolution, but it starts multiplying all the crap. And not only does it multiply, it starts overlapping onto each other like this. So it's a strange situation. It just doesn't always just tail off sometimes. It starts bouncing around, right? The, the effect is supposed to be it's bouncing around. The convolution reverb does not exactly work that way, but your room does, <laughs> you know? And it's like that concept of any of the crap getting multiplied and layered and layered and layered and layered until it's a mess may not seem like a big deal, but for a lot of people I've seen that don't understand that, that they will never utilize the full potential of their next biggest gun being their convolution reverb because they're trying to work with a mess that they haven't spent the time thinking about that the room getting as clean a capture as possible from as good a performance and as well sculpted sound as possible then cleaning up that capture with filtering things like rx to get it as pristine as possible and the next thing is your impulse responses. Your impulse responses, if I'm talking into a tin can and getting an impulse response of that, it's carrying the impulse response problems and the frequency response problems that's going to imprint onto your sound. And any saturation, noise, distortions caused from it or are inherent from whoever captured it with this type of microphone they use, the equipment, da 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 da, is going to get convolved and multiplied a mess onto your stuff. So in this regard, the convolution reverb is a very delicate instrument because if you have perfect captures and perfect responses, then you have a better chance of utilizing it perfectly to come out with some perfect stuff. But with all these things can multiply and cause a mess that you have to take this consideration as an engineer and start thinking about it. Because then you've got like, it's like having a Ferrari that you have that's covered in dirt and dust and muck and the gas and garbage in it and the carburetor's all messed up and the interior's a mess and, and you know, the, the exhaust is all screwed up with crap, it's burping out all over the place and choking out the filled i mean you know it just goes on and on and on because they're like a dang ferrari it really is and if you utilize you have to take precautions you don't put garbage gasoline into a ferrari and then expect it's gonna run like a ferrari bro it's just not does that make sense you know the, there's at least three areas that you need to focus on as a next level master audio engineer so that you can utilize this big gun because sometimes it doesn't take much I mean, it does not take much, and it's just like, yeah, right there. But if you're working with three parts of garbage, garbage from the capture, the capture itself, you need to spend time cleaning it and working on that, and garbage in your impulse response, you've got all three sides of garbage coming at you that this done a little bit, I mean, it's like, I'm just going to put it up just a little bit, and it's, oh, yeah. How are you going to do that? You're, like, trying to deal with fine dainties, like fine china, you know, and you're dealing with a d d retarded garbage can 57 DeSoto. You know, I mean, it doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that I'm trying to make this thing again, that sound comical, but it's true. Your impulse responses, you can take them and filter them, high, low pass filter them, clean them up. You can equalize them. You can cut them down. And we talked about that. You know, when we're talking about, if you look at those videos on C50 Clarity Guides, and I made a point about that a little bit in the last video, that you know, and you can clean them up. You can throw them in RX, things like that, and really spend some time cleaning them up with the reducing reverberation effect, reducing the frequency response effects, re reducing the saturation noise distortion in the file so that it doesn't imprint on, start multiplying whatever its crap is onto the stuff that you have spent so much time capturing it perfectly. Then you spend so much time filtering it perfectly and throwing it in RX and just pristine and yeah, dude. Now, you know, and it's like, and now you just screwed it all up with some nasty impulse response that, you know, a lot of times you can get pretty inexpensive impulse responses and spend some time cleaning them up. You know, like I talked about in the C50 Clarity Guide, there is a playlist on my channel about that and throwing them in something like rx6 high low pass filtering them clean up stuff in the low end and the high end that's you know multiplying garbage and you know trying to remove saturation noise distortion from them you know it's it's 
a huge concept, and especially in reverberation, because equalization we talked about filtering and cleaning things up, and RX is a big thing for me, something like that, a piece of equipment like that. But if you focus a lot on your capture, that you'll have to worry less and less and less and less about that kind of stuff, the better you get at doing it and getting good, clean captures. But still, it doesn't hurt. Does that make sense? But reverberation and your next biggest gun convolution, any stuff from any one of those areas or even your DAW or hardware that's, you know, putting saturation noise distortion into it and it's filtering into there from anywhere, somewhere, the convolution reverb is going to multiply all that stuff. So from anywhere it can be coming from, you want to reduce that, eradicate it, filter it, you know, do whatever you have to to get it cleaned up that way that you are the delicate thing that it can be sometimes sometimes it's not sometimes i put my convolution reverb on for something and it's not that delicate bro it's just not it's okay you know crank it up a little bit or da, da. it's not you know i'm not having me point you know zero 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 one six of a of a of, you know of a of a percent you know to for this application like i'm working on a nasa rocket ship sometimes it doesn't have to be quite that exact you know, does that make sense? But sometimes that it doesn't take much. Just a little too much salt in the mix causes everything to just to fall apart. And it multiplies. So not only on each individual track you're doing that, if you duplicate tracks because you're trying to create spatialization, it starts adding more garbage there across a group or a bunch of subgroups. It adds more garbage into the mix. And then across a whole mix, you're going to multiply it even more by putting a light little reverb on it at the end to, you know, blend things together and start to glue the mix together and help them to make them feel like they're in their own space and, you know, and I'm working together in their own environment, not conflicting with each other and da 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 at all phases you can be multiplying tons of garbage in there and it doesn't take much you wouldn't think just a little bit of saturation on the noise floor or distortion or something like that across a whole mix that you've got 30 tracks it's going to add up does that make sense which may work out to being that nice analog warp sound bro you know <laughs> it's like but it might not you know it might not not might not you might not perceive it as that some kind of analog warp sound you might perceive it as garbage you know so <laughs> does that make sense if you're really into analog gear that it might not affect you quite so badly <laughs> with all due respect i'm making it funny so don't you know beat me up but you know it's like it can be true a little bit because i ran into some people that get really into the analog equipment and they don't perceive the light amounts of saturation distortion you know a little bit of garbage coming in there as a problem because it's normal the way it should be it's live and it's old crap from the you know the 1930s that we're recording and you know and it's, it's supposed to sound like that you know that's just like you know that's where all the heart and love and soul and music came from and it's like well i don't know it sounds like crap to me but i don't know anyway so that is another thing to take into consideration the application and you know how you're trying to get your mix to sound because there's sometimes i do that myself if i get some reggae band in or some surf band that wants a live sound eh, i'm not wanting them to sound like some hyper clean pop song bro it's just not happening and i'll definitely do some analog emulation because it really enhances the sound and the vibe and you, you know of what's going on with them and that's true so you have to learn as an audio engineer when to go back in time also to you know get that vibe and that feeling which is a whole nother topic that we'll get into later but anyway this is huge you know and you know like i said it sounds like a lot of work that you're going through that but in myself i have like we've talked about this before i have like my five basic responses large hall medium hall small hall a st peterburg's cathedral and a taj mahal and in each one of these i've got cut down to kind of just 20 milliseconds 30 milliseconds and then i have a whole other set of them that are flattened flat frequency response and the original on all those so i have quite a bit of pick and quite a few different ones to work with to get good spatialization unless i really want it in some certain environment does that make sense because i've worked on those quite a lot to make them sound really good so i can use them across the board almost any type of production so i hope that helps you clean up your mess before you ruin your next biggest gun and understand about the multiplication of the mess and i will see you 
in the next video.